And we are super psyched to welcome our newest sponsor, Thunder Road Guitars. Thunder Road Guitars is the Pacific Northwest best source for premium, new, used, and vintage guitars, amplifiers, and pedals. Online or in their Seattle, that's West Seattle, or Portland stores. You'll find fantastic customer service and a terrific vibe. I know because I'm in there a lot. Grab a cup of coffee, swing on in, don't spill your coffee, and check it all out. And now if you use code TOURSTORIES10, you can get 10% off at thunderroadguitars.com. Yes, that's me playing guitar. Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course, and it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stores. Have a great one. And we continue to celebrate our friends and partners over at Isotope. And we got some big news for you. The gold standard of audio repair, RX-11, is coming in May. In the meantime, you can buy RX-10 now on sale and get RX-11 absolutely free when it's released. Tour Story listeners get 10% off by using code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All at isotope.com. That's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Ben, Emily, Peter, and Mac. Babe Report. Joe. How's it going? <laughs> it's good. It's going. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Nice to have all of you on. Uh, how's your day going? so far pretty good Mm -hmm. uh you know started started well continues to go great where's your day going are you all in the same place no Uh, my day started at my house now i'm at work mech is also at work with me i was gonna say our day is going to band practice yeah our day later is going to band practice it will also end at the same house that i started my day at Wow, this is full circle <laughs> day conversation. <laughs> How about you, Joe? How's your day going? It's going pretty good. I took a, um, I have a large dog and a small dog. I took the big <laughs> one to get his, his hair done. And the small one gets bummed when he's not around, so she's sitting right next to me and hopefully won't uh, bark. Everything's going good. I've played drums for an hour already today. Holy moly. There you go. Yeah. Um. So you, where you two work together? Where do you work? Ben and Mac we work, work together. A, yeah, we work at a company called Sure that makes microphones. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Emily used to work there. No longer. Actually, it's been several her. years now. Okay. <laughs> I've applied twice and they've never hired me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you apply as soon as Emily left? Oh uh, no, different okay. different fields. I'm <laughs> not. I'm the. Uh, work in the least technical okay. all right. field of anyone in the band. You are all in Chicago, right? That is correct. Is that the, yeah. yep. that's the HQ for sure? It's a, the HQ is actually in Niles, Illinois, which is a, just a village northwest of the city. Yeah. But we all live in Chicago. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Did you grow up there, spend your formative years there? Is it, did you get all your rock and roll from Chicago? Uh, we can go around the room here. I grew up in Rockford, which is uh, the home of Cheap Trick and uh, Sock Monkeys, if you know what those are, and mm-hmm. uh, Tinker Toys. Those are all things from Rockford, including myself. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I grew up uh, on the edge of the cornfields across from a particle accelerator <laughs> uh-huh. uh, in a place called Batavia, and uh, that's why I'm like this. Okay. I might like be the works. only one who was born in Chicago itself. Uh, I grew up in a very close suburb, um, Oak Park, immediately outside of the city, but I spent my formative years going into Chicago for shows and going to record stores and stuff. 
I'm the outlier. I'm from Long Island originally. Is Chicago still thriving in, in the music department as it seems to have been since I've been alive? Yeah, very much so, I yeah. think. We got some great bands here. Uh, Milk Belly, um, Stuck. Somebody else threw out a band. Meat Wave. Oh, God. Yes. Love Meat Cusp. Wave. What a doozy of a Cusp band, that Meat Wave. Uh, Calico Loco, Heat Death. I mean, there's like just the groundswell in the DIY scene is really something. Yeah, you name it. It's uh, it's a fun place to be, good place for music. And the jazz scene here is cool. There's a, anything, anything you want. Yeah, even pickleball courts. I played a lot of pickleball <laughs> instead of going to yeah. shows last time I was there. No joke. I think uh, Chicago is also home to the best band name, uh, Bussy Queen Power Trip. Say that again? Bussy Queen Power Trip. Woskies. What do they sound like? <laughs> They're cacophonous. It's like hardcore. It's hip hop. It's it's everything. Oh, yeah, they're great. You. Good. I'm gonna find them. That's that's too good of a name. You're right. So, how did Babe Report begin? I understand it was just Ben and Emily at the beginning. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I I guess actually originally it was like. Peter and Emily and I had a project called Ordinary Reaper and we had like our first shows mm -hmm. all booked and then COVID happened. Um, so we never actually got to play. And then, uh, yeah, just with COVID, you know, we didn't practice anymore and it just kind of fizzled out. Uh, I think a lot of us just had lacked the motivation to do music. It was just such a weird time. Right. Uh, yeah. and then at one point I think Emily and I just for fun, went to our practice space and uh we're just messing around and i was playing drums i'm not a good drummer um and uh wrote some songs and uh we were practicing enough that it was like oh okay well maybe this is something we will do uh and then uh, i think just in passing mech and i were talking at work i was just like oh you want to come and play bass sometime and pretty much as soon as as mech started playing with us i was like oh wow this this could be something cool but if it's going to be something cool, I can't be playing drums because <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> so it just wouldn't work. And so uh, we reached out to Peter again to see if uh, he was interested in, in playing music. And uh, he was. Also, over that time, we all ended up moving very close to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all live like 10 minutes okay. apart. Unplanned. Unplanned. Coincidence, yeah. But we all live like pretty much in the vicinity of this neighborhood called Jefferson Park in Chicago, uh, which has a, a hyperlocal newspaper, uh, which um, the first single off the record uh, is basically about. <laughs> we can okay. we can stop there and, and pick that yeah, up. Yeah, later. I'm going to ask you a little bit about okay. that because I want to yeah. I want to hear about that. Sure. It's pretty interesting. To, um, and then so. When, when you first started, you did record an EP. Was that all four of you? Uh, yeah, we ha we actually did two EPs, okay. one of which uh, I've been trying to bury. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, don't look for it. Um, I feel like the record uh, is much more representative of uh, us sort of working on stuff together. Um, I think we did that EP mm -hmm. pretty immediately after like uh, all four of us started playing. Yeah, it was right after Peter joined because... Yeah. Like my ba my bass parts are still based on your drumming, Ben. <laughs> I think that on the EP, I think we recycled a uh, ordinary Reaper song on that one too. That's true. And now you've written and recorded this new record. Um, did you get better? <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was a question. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm going to ask you about. Is that a question? Uh, yeah, I think we really like, I mean, that we've been spitballing names for the album for a while. And I, I forget who pitched that one, but it was like immediately, oh, that's that's definitely the name of the album. Um, yeah. Because it, uh, I, I hope the answer is yes, but it also has like uh, implications of like, um, you know, like health and mental health. And that's like yeah. a... I mean, I think something we all think about, uh, and, um, you know, the name of the band, uh, is a Bill and Ted's reference. Uh, and the very last thing that Rufus says, uh, you know, George Carlin's character Rufus says at the end of the first movie mm -hmm. is they do get better, which is very similar to, uh, did you get yeah. better? 
I misheard that for the last like 25 years. I thought that it was, did you get better being like mugging to the audience and being like, right. hey, your band also sucks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wild stallions rule i got, i also kind of thought of it as maybe a sarcastic question to you know everyone tried to make themselves better post in the pandemic oh i like that and it's kind of like did you get better yeah. now you, are no, you, you just didn't. the same yeah, all that d- yeah. dumb shit you did <laughs> I, I got i got worse yeah. <laughs> um that's coming out on may 31st and you currently have a single a turtle of Reaper, a great title. All all of your <laughs> most of your titles I'd say are very intriguing. Thank you. And I'm yeah. I mean that quite literally. It's intriguing to read those titles. Um you started to talk a little bit about the song and the words. Yes. And I, I kind of was gleaning that it was addressing um a, a social or societal kind of paranoia and maybe questioning that source of that paranoia yeah, that's um, pretty spot on and the yeah and the the thing i like about it is largely is it has this spirit of i'm a little bit older and when i was really deeply into punk rock and punk rock only there was the spirit of questioning religion and politics a very easy um thing but i really like that energy and uh it seems to be so symbiotic with all these tunes it's a great combo it's got everything for me i'm sold ah i'm so so glad to hear that thanks that's very nice of you uh, tell me tell me more about this turtle of reaper <laughs> song it's, it's, well, i like the story that i that i know so far yeah uh i i don't know what the turtle of reaper is i think i also think it's a funny phrase um yeah but the the song lyrics um are about this newspaper, uh, the Nadig newspaper, um, which is like a family newspaper uh, that is based in uh, in the little neighborhood of Jefferson Park where we live, and uh, it has like a, it's you know I I respect that it's like a a print newspaper in 2024, and they they do try. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Nadig writes most of the articles, uh, and I've heard. One of my neighbors actually used to work there. I found out later, and he's turns out Brian Nadig is probably a, a pretty good guy who's trying to do the right thing. But um, there's a, a crime watch section on the inside, and it's just like a full page of like you know this happened to this person, and you know you know this is the description of wh- whatever. Uh, and it's that crime watch is like directly next to this column written by this guy Russ Stewart. Um, who is, man, his column is infuriating. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's an opinion. Angle? It's like, it's I an opinion call column. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. It's like an opinion column, but he, he focuses on local politics and, uh, he is like, uh, he loves to use the term woke. Uh, he is, uh, yeah. he is on the opposite side of the spectrum, but he loves gotcha. to call people like woke leftist, this and that. And, uh. You can pr- you probably, yeah, probably uh, gleam where uh, what his angle is, but um, yeah, he's also yeah. had the same photo next to his column. It looks like since 1981. I think um, from, since the 70s. Yeah, since yeah. the 70s. He has, I mean, he has a website too, uh, which is incredible. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> but it's also been an institution. I mean, my wife, when she was in high school. Uh, delivered papers for Natick News. Okay. And also, no one's really sure how you end up getting it. You can subscribe to it, but it just shows up. Yeah, we've been getting it oh, for gotcha. years now, and I don't, I don't pay them anything. I'm glad that I get it. It's actually, and it arrives on Wednesday, which is like our band practice day. So it's like, it's freshly out and open, and we're like perusing it as you know, where you get ready to go play music. So. It, it like really yeah for some reason like That's that great. that newspaper and band practice are like very synonymous in my mind um but the the lyrics uh i think were from one specific crime watch article where somebody was like waiting for the bus there's a bus station right by us and uh some guy just like took this guy's wallet and cell phone and then like later on the bus driver found the wallet and it just seemed like i mean i also wait at that bus station sometimes if i take the bus to work 
And uh, it was just like such a weird slice of life. And it's like, why is this in the newspaper? And like, it gives me the sense of like, you know, people being like worried about crime to the point where like, it's too much, right? Like there's only so much right. you can do. There's going to be crime in any big city. And like to just sit around, like, you know, reading this crime watch and just like, you know, shivering in your pants because uh, <laughs> somebody took someone's, you know, wallet and cell phone uh, waiting for the bus. Yeah. It's like, come on. It's like, I don't know. That's, that's uh, Fox's model. Yeah, exactly. Totally. The, uh, you know, six ad world, be afraid type model. Right. Yeah. Six ad world. They can, then they can sell ads based off of that mm -hmm. paranoia. Right. Fear. Totally. It makes sense. Turns out there aren't really good advertisements for um, walk by the river. Have you walked by the river lately and had a nice time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you and your friends felt childlike wonder lately? Yeah. Have you smiled lately? We're selling smiles. <laughs> oh. That'd be fun. You, we, you guys should make a bunch of ads, happy products. That's, we should actually, we've talked about putting an ad in the Natick News for the record. Yeah. Uh, you should. I and mean, just make it like Please a happy, do. yeah, that's a great idea. Just all, just all <laughs> smiles. <laughs> you might finally get your subscription canceled. <laughs> ben and I were talking about how long might it be until Brian Nadig finds out that he is mentioned in a song. Like how, how much is he Google? Does he Google his name? I don't know. I don't know how all old right. he is or how tech savvy he is, but. You don't know him, but he seems to be possibly an okay fella. He's a man about town. I've heard he wears big pants, actually. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> like he's like in the sense where he's gone from skinny jeans back to big pants. I like think everyone no, else is not doing? not in the fashionable sense, but just like he has, <laughs> he has like <laughs> unreasonably he large pants. Jeans. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not okay. making this up. This is actually what I've heard. Well, if he's a big guy, he needs big pants. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. He could yeah, have skinny he pants. Could have, he could have small pants. Yeah. Oh, man. This could add to you. You could have a big pants ad in there. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get back to you on this. Yeah. I, no, this is good. Uh, we can workshop <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to play um, Turtle of Reaper. Is that cool with you all? That's a, that would be cool. Here we go. That's a, a fist pumper too. It's those darn drums, Peter. I like the way this record sounds, and I swear I thought that before I read anything press, and obviously before I knew that y'all worked it. Sure, but um, 
You recorded this record, we did. right? Yeah, we recorded it in uh, our basement. Yeah. Did you record the EP, the previous EP? Yeah. Future EP? So it, maybe I did get better. What you do different? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just wondering. I I don't. It's not a criticism of the EP. I just I like it better. I do think, without getting too in the weeds, yeah. there's a lo- great low end presence on this one. Cool. I got and, better um, monitors. Um, oh, and uh, okay. I don't know. We we like mixed it as a band, uh, which um, I felt. I think we spent more time trying to mix this one than the last one. Mm-hmm. And if I remember, did we record the EP in the basement as well, or was that at the practice space? Does anybody? That was in the, the basement. basement. It was. That was in the basement. Okay. Yeah. So I think the big difference there is that um, we had a a friend who works at Sure, our our, our buddy Steve Merrick. He plays in a really cool band called Monobody, which is really amazing. Uh, like, I don't know, almost like prog jazz fusion band. They're incredible. Um, they have two bassists. They have two bassists, and okay. their their drummer is his fellow Namdi, who has his own career. Uh, he's really, really incredible musician in his own right. But uh, anyway, so Steve set up drum mics for us. He's kind of like the the house ears of sure like any of our listening products and a lot of our mics he's like he's the guy um so he set up our drum mics for us and then kind of like let us loose to you know do everything else on our own and uh, that's probably why things sound better if i had to put my money somewhere we also spent we had a wild evening of repatching the board and Mm -hmm. reorganizing routing for yeah. everything to do simultaneous compression stuff and yeah uh, that's true yeah and did I a lot up, of yeah you borrowed my 1176 and yeah. then steve complained that the the the, uh, the lights were the wrong color was bothering everybody but yeah there was a lot more <laughs> outboard gear involved i think just maybe better microphones too um mm-hmm. yeah so uh taking a, a step back a little bit how how do you how do you prepare to record? Do you write in the studio? I mean, it sounds like your studio might be your rehearsal space. It is, yeah. Um, yeah. And do you write the tunes and then rehearse them forever and then track them? Or do you do you write a little bit in the studio? We didn't really write anything like as we were doing recording. I think we, we were, you know, we were waiting to record until we had like enough songs essentially uh, in the can to we did write like one song the week before. Yes. Cuz mm-hmm. cuz we put we, we scheduled recording. We're like, "All right, we're going to record and we need to write a song next week." And so we did that. Yeah, the A&R guy was <laughs> like, "I don't hear a single, you know." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do think we rewrote at least some parts of Kathleen, or at least my part that I played. That's true. That, that is true. Like after we tracked the bass and drums. Right, and if you're sort of well rehearsed, uh, how long did you spend on on the record uh, Sons repatching day? Um, it was really mostly just a weekend, and then uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, the lyrics, like the vocal stuff, I stretched out a little a little bit because I hadn't written some of the words yet. Mm-hmm. But it was pretty much all done, quick. Okay, well, it sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are your plans to tour or play shows? We had uh, some shows set up here. Uh, we have not announced our uh, record release show as of, you know, recording this, but we will soon. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter has some plans. Uh, I don't know if that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm having a having a child and end of July. So. Oh. Okay. Not much. So you may, Touring may not on the be horizon. hitting the road for five weeks yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. I um I left my partner with a 10-day-old baby. Oh, my gosh. For one show. Oh, okay. Uh, when he was 10 days old, he was not named. And while I was flying to this show, we named him. I met Charles Barkley, and then I came home. <laughs> As one does. It was, a, yeah. it was a weird event, and I missed my flight also. And you had Charles Barkley name your child. <laughs> well, you named so, him Charles Barkley. Hence, hence the name Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Little Charles Barkley, and that's only his first name. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, 
And when are these uh, these shows sprinkled around the summer or the spring? They are. They're coming up. Uh, we have one. Uh, we're opening for um, Ringo Death Star. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. May 12th. And then um, we have a, a show with our buddies Wall Plant at uh, Fallen Log, which I guess is a, a new venue that I have not been to, but seems cool. Mm. And then release show is at Empty Bottle, uh, but we're still working on the details there. Okay. Yeah. But oh, speaking of empty bottle, yes. have you read Wellness like everyone else that listens to NPR has read? No. I don't know no. what that is. Uh, it's a book, but there's a lot of empty bottle in it. Yeah, it's fiction, oh. but they, yeah, they're in the empty bottle. Well, quite a bit. well, if it's set at the empty bottle, I guess we got to read it. Yeah. Or just the first half, at least. We, um, yeah, go, please go ahead. I was going to say something <laughs> dumb. No. So. Go ahead, no, say it, say too it. Too late. I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right, you're done. All right, well, um, <laughs> congrats again on this record. Um, it's out May 31st. I hope to see you guys play. I know you're not going to tour this year, but I'll, maybe I'll come to Chicago to see it. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I mean, we, we, okay. I do hope to tour once, uh, once we're yeah. ready. But, All and right. you're in California, is that right? I'm in Seattle. Seattle, okay. Cool music in Seattle. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm gone a lot, so I'm kind of out of touch right now. But okay, Chastity Belts. There, I listened to the Chastity Belt episode. Yes, yeah, I like them a lot. They're cool. Um, all right. Well, thanks for your time, and um, hope to see you down the road somewhere. Alrighty. Take care. Okay. <laughs> so thin Did you see the look in their eyes Tell me does it fit true to size And they win Size.